This is part two of the letter to the church at Laodicea. And we start with Christ admonishing the church to buy eye ointment. The actual city of Laodicea was known for its eye salve. But God saw their need for a far more important medication, and that was the anointing of the Holy Spirit. This eye condition is something that they have no remedy for. Only God can heal it. Today we boast of being an enlightened generation, able to see more than any previous generations before us in a physical sense. It's true, for we are seeing things now that no other generation has ever seen. At this moment we are receiving images back from Mars in high definition, from the spacecraft Perseverance. We have the ability to see far into space with the Hubble telescope. In days gone by, you would have had to travel across the oceans in a ship to see Hawaii. But now you can see photos of it in your own home. And with Google Earth, you can virtually travel down every street using your mobile phone. The invention of the camera really opened up our eyes to see wonderful things. I never cease to be amazed at how we can take pictures of what we are looking at on our phones. The camera that I would have loved to have had five years ago is now on my phone and more. I also have a high-quality video recorder on there too that I take with me everywhere. With television and satellites, we can watch football games live on the other side of the world on our 50-inch flat-screen televisions. We can see the sex of a baby in a mother's womb with ultrasound and scan the brain with CAT scans and MRI machines. You can also go online and see what the surf is like at major beaches around the world without actually driving there with the use of video cams set up on the beach. I could go on and on. Indeed, we are an enlightened generation, but as far as the spiritual things are concerned, God says we are blind. As King David said, where is the prophet and those who know how long? We are given no signs from God, no prophets are left, and none of us knows how long this will be. Psalm 74, 9. God counsels us to have his special brand of eye salve, which is the anointing of the Holy Spirit on our lives. Paul prayed for the Ephesus church to have their spiritual eyes opened, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Ephesians 1, 18. Having your eyes open speaks of being enlightened and receiving God's knowledge and wisdom. Today we have more worldly knowledge than any other generation. God says that the anointing of the Holy Spirit and His Word is far more important than this or the latest video game, technology, cameras or television. Look at the Apostle Peter. He was a simple fisherman, yet by the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon him, he was able to turn the world upside down for Jesus. God loves using simple things to confound the wise. Which generation has been able to see as much as this Laodicean generation? We are the enlightened ones. We are those found in the time of the end, spoken of in Daniel 12.4, where knowledge shall be increased. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. We may say that we are a generation that can see, but God says we are blind. Where are the visions that God's people had in days of old? The cure for the Laodicean spirit is to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God every day, believing in his word and being clothed in God's clothing. He promises us that with the Holy Spirit's help, we shall prophesy, have visions and dream dreams. It's his will for this to become a reality in the church before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. When you look at the seven churches as periods of time since 96 AD, you can't help but see that we are in the Laodicean age, which began in the mid-1800s. See my teachings on the seven churches. In the last three church ages, the messages have all included verses on the second coming. For instance, to the Sardis church, Jesus said to watch, because Jesus will come as a thief. To the Philadelphian church, he said, I am coming quickly. Now in this Laodicean age, we are told that he is now so close that he is knocking at the door. The hour of temptation. In the previous pre-Laodicean period of Philadelphia, the Lord said that he would keep them from the hour of temptation that would come on the world. 
because thou hast kept the word of patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Revelation 3.10 We have to admit that this time in which we live is swamped with temptation. Due to social media and the internet, even children can have access to pornography and sexual content that other generations never had. In Paul's day, you would have to have gone to a pagan temple to look at a naked woman. But now you can look at them 24-7 in the privacy of your own room. Hollywood is also producing movies that are full of sex, violence and blasphemy that our parents were never exposed to. Note that it says the hour of temptation. In prophetic language, an hour is not very long, as opposed to a day of temptation or a year of temptation. What this is telling me is that the time we're in now, before the return of the Lord, is not going to be for very long. Wake up, for the hour is getting late. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. As I've already said, the promise to those who overcome in this age is greater than any of the previous generations. I don't know about you, but the message I am hearing to the church has a lot to do with reigning in heavenly places with Christ, being co-crucified, co-ascended, co-seated, and co-glorified with Christ. Christ's resurrection is our resurrection. It's a truth that hasn't been taught much in previous generations. In fact, It would have been considered blasphemous for some Christians not that long ago. We were told that we were just worms and unworthy in the sight of God. There was a Christian song that came out a few years ago that said, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. That comes from the scripture, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, that in him we become the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians 5.21 In America, a Christian radio station banned this song saying was blasphemous. They were not ready for the truth. Praise God, we have been taught the full gospel now. It's time for us to know that we can be seated with Christ in heavenly places and comprehend the grace of God more fully. We are in Christ, and all he has been blessed with, we are blessed with too. Here is one scripture to show the heart of Jesus towards us. Believe. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I and them and you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. John 22.23 At the end of the book of Revelation, it speaks of the bride of Christ getting herself ready and calling out for the Lord to return. The whole revelation of the church being the bride of Christ is one of partnership and co-reigning with him. The bride is one with her husband, and all that he has been given is shared with her. We need to relieve this and get ourselves ready. Look at my messages on the Bride of Christ. It's time to wake up and realize that the day of the Lord is nearer now than we think. He is knocking at the door. For you know quite well that the day of the Lord's return will come unexpectedly, like a thief in the night. When people are saying everything is peaceful and secure, then disaster will fall on them as suddenly as a pregnant woman's labor pains begin. And there will be no escape. But you aren't in the dark about these things, dear brothers and sisters, and you won't be surprised when the day of the Lord comes like a thief. For you are all children of light and of the day. We don't belong to the darkness and night. So be on your guard, not asleep like others. Stay alert and be clear-headed. 1 Thessalonians 5, 2-6